Hi, this is Oscar from Hammerfall. You're listening to United Rock Nations. Our new album, Avenge the Fallen, comes out on August 9th. And after that, we'll be playing two shows in October in Nantes and Paris together with Powerwolf. Don't miss any of that. Hello, guys of United Rock Nations. We are an amazing company with Oscar of Hammerfall. How are you? I'm very good. Thank you. I'm very, very good. How are you? Very well. We are here, of course, to talk about the new album, Avenge the Fallen. It will be released on 9 August. Um, as usual, a great, heavy and epic album. Why is your personal feeling about this new album? Um, it's, it's, there's a lot of feelings, <laughs> of course, it's, it's through, or with any album that we release. But uh, for, for this one, I felt, uh, well, I think we all felt, right from the very start because you, you begin with the drums and then that's how we record albums is you begin with the drums and you add the guitars and the bass and then uh you add the vocals and all the other stuff it's like it, separately you know um and once we started recording uh david was our drummer was so fired up uh when he recorded uh that it sort of put a bar that everybody else had to reach so to speak when we recorded so um, I think we always try to capture the, the live energy of, of a show in, in the album recording. And it's very difficult to do it. I don't think we did it full, uh, full 100% this time either. But I think this is very, uh, probably the best live sounding studio record we've ever done, if you know what I mean. So it, there's a lot of energy, a lot of excitement. And everybody, including the the producer Frederick, who has to mix the album at the end, exactly. he came to us during the recording. Said, "You guys, you guys really perform this one." I, now I'm feeling pressured. He said, "To to deliver the best mix uh, and mastering I can possibly do." Uh, so we all put in just a little bit extra effort on the production. I think the production speaks for itself. I think it's the best production we had on the album in a long, long, long time. Uh, as far as the songs, I mean, the songs are some of them are five years old. Some of them are very recently written. Uh, there is a big span of, of time. And so I've lived with some of them for a very long time, but I've always known the, the, what, what they were capable of doing. And I think they, uh, uh, there's a song like um, uh, Freedom, for example. Mm. That's a song uh, that I wrote in 2018 already. Uh, oh. So it's, yeah, it's a long while ago uh that was was done in the summer of 2018 but it didn't fit on any album since then i don't think it it was it was never right for any of them but for this album i felt i'm gonna see what what happens if i put it in and and it just clicked like that you know and that's what i think the, the best thing about this album is every song fills a very important role in the in the album so if you take any of them, i mean i have my favorites the one i think are most representable for Hammerfall, the ones I think that are the best single uh, so, so choices and stuff. But even if you take other songs out, the, the album as a whole, uh, sort of the, the ship is now level, but if you take it out, it goes, you know, so it's not right anymore. You know, there's something wrong. There will be something missing. So I think that is what I'm the most proud of this album. All, every song is is really good and fills a very important role on the album. Absolutely. Just before you talk about Frederick Nostrom, he produced again uh, the new album, but you recorded also some parts in Los Angeles uh, yes. with a lot of collaborations, like the one with Jay Ruston. Yeah. Tell us more about those recording sessions and the collaboration with Jay. Yeah, so um, normally this is how we have recorded the last five albums, I think, uh, the same process. So we record drums and guitars and bass here in our own studio with together with Frederick and Pontus, our, our guitar player is uh, uh, handling a lot of the production um, duties as well, the producing duties, because he's, uh, he, he does, so when we record the guitars and bass, Frederick is almost never there uh, because we do this. He sets the sound, helps us get that sound that we want. And then uh, uh, we do the rest ourselves. And Pontus is in charge of that. Uh, but the, the vocals, Joachim always wants to do the vocals on a, in somewhere else, uh, work with a, a producer that he trusts, that he believes uh, can, can make him perform the way he wants to. Uh, and he also wants to be somewhere where it's not, where he's not distracted by his daily routine, if you know okay. what I mean. Uh, so, and LA is a nice place to be for that. So 
uh, we have worked with James Michael a couple of times, but James moved to Ireland, Northern Ireland, um, just this year, I think, in the beginning of this year. Uh, so he's not in LA anymore. Um, okay. And, and uh, when we were on tour in the US last year, we, we met with a, a couple of people. Um, uh, well, Joachim did actually, uh, and Jay was one of them. And he, th that's how the collaboration started. You know, that's how and he just, uh, you know, they felt each other out, see what kind of people they were. And uh, then we decided to to work with Jay, and it was really really good. He's a very cool down to earth guy, very knowledgeable, great at what he's doing, and he also has worked with a lot of Swedish bands, so he knows <laughs> our little <laughs> Swedish quirks. <laughs> Fantastic. So usually you wrote uh, all the the songs, so you bring the main musical ideas. Is that the same for this new album? Yes, it's been. It's, 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 we have found after so many years together, Joachim and I have found a really good way of working that that we feel comfortable with, that produces some some what we think is great results. So, it's exactly what you said. I do the the, the demos with the drum machine, my guitar, uh, whatever vocal melodies I have, I record with the guitars, or in some cases, very few, but I sing them as well. Uh, I lay down some backing vocals to make make Joachim get a complete. Uh, as as complete of a vision of, of uh, as a complete of a version of my vision of this song as I as I can give to him, then he takes the rest and I mean the the song and puts on his stuff. He's just, of course the lyrics, but also the, the main vocal melodies for the verses and, and for the most part, you know. So we do work together, and it's also the last couple of albums has been a much bigger back and forth with him and me. So I sent him an idea that that's maybe not one hundred percent finished. Uh, usually before I was like I've done. Here you go, you know, do this. Here's the song. Put your stuff on it. But this time, I can send him a song that I'm that's only half finished, and I go, "What do you think of this?" You know, uh, or I'm not sure if this is done yet or not. And then I, he comes back with a, usually very, uh, a very clear, and uh, um, it's a good, it's a great back and forth because he says the things I've never thought about. But they're also improving the song in the end, usually. Not always, of course, but for the most part. Mm -hmm. So we uh, we have a good back and forth. And we, this is the same thing when he does his vocal melody. So he sends mm -hmm. me some stuff. Oh, this is what I thought about for this song. What do you think? It's just, you know, does it vibe with what we're going for? Uh, and you think it's good and stuff. And, and uh, normally, I mean, I, I usually have some thoughts. But this album, very few minor details. And I got to say... Um, um, he did some of his absolute best work on that that I've ever heard him do uh, 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 over these 26, 27, well, let's see how many years, 28 years we've been working <laughs> together. <laughs> um, I mean, it, he elevated the songs. Normally, I think I have a great song. Uh, when I think I have a great song, I know it's going to be good, whatever he sings on top of it. But, uh, and usually it is, he, he elevates the songs very much. But I think there's a little bit this only details you know but he did this i think he had an approach to this with every part of every song she'll get the same amount of attention you know not just the oh this is verse let's mm -hmm. pass on that and we go through the next one everything deserved uh, uh deserved uh, to be paid attention to and for my money i he did the best job he's ever done on this album so for okay. me I, when i sent him a song i know it, it's good could be great even but uh, when the vocals comes on, that's when we know if it's a classic or not. Absolutely. Uh, I've selected two songs that I want to talk about. Sure. Um, I like a lot the song called The End Justifies. Mm -hmm. uh, very speedy, with a great break, where you sing, oh, The End Justifies. Uh, 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 Joachim sing, The End Justifies, Justify the Means. Yes, yeah. The End Justifies. Yeah. That sounds great. Tell, tell, tell us more about that song. So th that song was written in, um, uh, was it last year, I think? Pretty sure it was last year because we were in, uh, uh, you know, we have Sandberg guitars as a, uh, 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 that's the, the instruments we play, Sandberg guitars. So we went down there, Spurdick had his signature bass coming out. So Pontus, Spurdick and I went down to their factory, which we've never been before. So it was very interesting to be there. And what this was it, during the, uh, like in the break between tours. So I was in songwriting, I was writing a lot of music, a lot of stuff. So I brought my stuff with me. And there was a lot of stuff going on down there that 
uh, that, that Frederick only, I mean, the, my presence wasn't exactly required for this because it was his stuff. Uh, they were filming him and he was doing interviews and stuff. So I started fooling around with uh, the music stuff because I, nowadays uh, I, I bring I bring my uh, little tiny guitar fits in the suitcase. Okay. Um, with Actually, I have it right here. I'll show it to you um, if it's possible. Oops. Oh, uh, it's, it's very tiny. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, this is a full scale guitar, so I can bring it with me anywhere I go. It's not a sandbag, unfortunately, oh. but see, so the full full neck, but Absolutely. everything else is really tiny, it's as small as they can make it. Um, and uh, it's actually really good for, for this sort of thing because all I need apart from the guitar is the computer with the software and a little Absolutely. interface, which I have. So Absolutely. then I can write music anywhere I want. And uh, so that's what I did. I started working on this song, I had the riff my head or maybe recorded on my phone or something. Uh, so I started working on the, the riff there and um, the melodies and everything. I mean, I, I started working at that time in, in this is March or maybe April, no, it was probably March last year. Uh, but then I finished the song during the summer. So it took a little while to get that done. And the the the, the chorus part that you mentioned, the end thing uh, uh, has a sp pretty uh, special for me um, way that when I, when I, came up with it this is a, also that's part that part is years old uh, i don't know how many years but well pre-pandemic for sure because i was i haven't gone to the gym i have made my own gym now at home since then but uh, so i don't go go to any public gyms anymore but uh, i used to go to the gym uh, three or four times a week back then and i was on a cross trainer uh, just you know doing this uh, probably watching something not listening to music i usually don't listen to music i like to watch like a some sort of tv series or whatever it is you know okay. something you know uh so i was watching something and uh, or maybe i wasn't watching anything sometimes i forget uh, the phone but i remember this this part uh, came to me just bam popped into my head and i started uh, yeah no yes i turned off the music or the the, the phone i mean the the program i was watching and uh, i stood there and humming for myself, hoping nobody would notice <laughs> next to me. Uh, and then I, when, I've, uh, when I've thought, I want oh, this is really good, this, I've got this part now. Then I took the phone and I hummed it and I sang it very quietly into the microphone. Or maybe I had the earphones actually, that helped probably. Uh, but so that's how that came, uh, came about. And I, I used exactly what I came up with at that gym uh, I used for this song. Uh, so, it, and I like, what I like with this song is it's, um, the first half before the long break with, with, with this, it's a certain type of song. And when that, when it comes back, it's kind of the same type of song, but also a little bit different because that part is so important, but it's also completely different from anything in the other, in the rest exactly. of the song. So I, I, I'm, I, I'm very happy with how that song turned out. It's, I like the, the, when you get creative and it really works out. Um, the second song I like, very so much on this album is time in memorial uh -huh. but the the guitar riffs are amazing um uh, and the and the work um Fredrik did uh, uh with the bass is perfect uh yeah. and the song has some made in uh, iron maiden dio spirits uh, tell, tell tell us more about that song yeah it's interesting uh, uh that you mentioned those uh, names cuz uh, we we uh, of course are big fans of, of of those artists, but Absolutely. we never also never uh, think, are we going to do something? We're going to copy this here or, or, you know, do that here. Absolutely. It just sounds, uh, that's how it comes out because we're, we grew up with that type of music. Yeah. Um, but uh, this song, if you're talking musically, um, the melody do, 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 thing, uh, I don't know. It came from some, some uh, TV show I was watching. I don't remember oh. what it was, but yeah, I was oh. watching. So, oh fuck, this is great. It was just like a background <laughs> thing that was going. So I, I I took it and I um put on all the chords and everything and made it powerful, made it more metal thing. Um, and it's it's not like I stole the melody from anywhere. It just it, this is how it spark the spark the because this is how it works. You get hear something, and then it sparks some sort of thing in your brain and that's how you, then I take that stuff and work on it and develop it and and uh, evolve it into what I want it to be so that's what I did with that but I remember also having very uh, a lot of problems with because I had the 
the the intro all the intro part was done i was this is how it's going to be then i knew what kind of riff i had but I, this riff was really hard to to uh nail down so to speak i had several different versions and i didn't like any of them so uh in the end i went with this i was a bit unsure um uh, about that part actually the 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 riff and the verse part those two i was a little bit unsure if if when I, if, because I worked on it so much, there's been so many different versions of it. I, I didn't, I didn't feel 100% that I was done with it. But uh, I asked the jockey and he said, yes, you know, this is how it's supposed to be. He put his vocals on. Uh, and then you have, of course, the little, the pre-chorus when you take it down. Uh, so there's only uh, like non-distorted guitars and stuff. That was also there. There was just the riff. It was a small part in the song that wasn't done. Uh, and the chorus, of course, it's very chanting. It goes, it, it's, it is kind of like time moving because you can't stop it. It just goes there. And it's also a good ending of the album, I thought, uh, with the, the, the chorus melody. It's, it's, it can live on in your mind for a little while exactly, after, even exactly. after the music is done. And the end of the song um, is uh, the, the part is the, cor uh, the chorus going on. But the, the producing of that, I have nothing to do with. Uh, that was all Pontus, and the, the we have a background singer uh, called Thomas Wikström. Uh, he sings with Therion, among other bands, but he done uh, backing vocals on, on the last two albums for us. Uh, so he came up with, and he's very creative also, he comes up with stuff, and for the it, most part, it doesn't really fit if there's a, uh, it makes a big change to the song. If it adds to the song, yes, we keep it, but if it's something that changes what we thought about what this song was supposed to be, then we, we don't keep it, of course. And this part was, this part changed the song, but it was so okay. goddamn cool. So we, he just did this, oh, things with a, uh, in the, and then Pontus, because um, Pontus, I, I've done the keyboards, uh, but he he was he, he has done the, the sounds and the arrangement. Uh, well, the arrangement comes from me, but the sounds come from him. But then, because this was a new part, he made the arrangement and all that stuff you hear at the end of the song is Pontus. Uh, so it was, that was really cool. Like a kind of like a movie ending to somehow. Exactly, and I think that's exactly. what it was going for. So it, it's a really interesting ending that I've never, I have never would never have been able to come up with that the way, that way. This, I, I can't do that. You know? So that was a really nice thing. It's, it's a great song. Um, can we talk about the lyrics or so? Of course. Uh, no. there, is, there is two sentences that uh, I checked and it, uh, it feels good when I, listen that kind of uh, for example on the song capture the dream uh, mm -hmm. uh joachim wrote when the future seems to bleak don't look there for answers look inside yourself to be true to you alone mm -hmm. yes that that's the first one and the second one in in freedom he wrote rise uh, and be the master of your destiny that's yeah. exactly what 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 I lead my life. So, tell us more <laughs> about about those uh, those lyrics and also the, the the concept with Hector. It seems that Hector is uh, something change. Yeah. Um, the, so this whole album, uh, it, this is not a concept album that songs have a story and goes into each other and stuff. But many of the songs, uh, if not all of them, deal with the concept of of freedom. Absolutely, uh, a, a big deal with uh, with I, I uh, Joachim told me this because uh, it's ba ba mainly about uh, what these two uh, sentences tell told you actually. Uh, look inside yourself because you're in, in you're the master of your own life. Absolutely, and, and you have the freedom to be whatever you want to be. Nobody's going to tell you that you can't be this or can't be that or do that or whatever it is. It's all you. And this is sort of the theme on a lot of songs. And I think for me personally, this is the heavy metal spirit in, 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 in a couple of, of sentences. That's how, how heavy metal should be for me, uh, the way I see it. Great. Uh, so um, you've just come back from the United Forces tour with Halloween. Um, no, that was last year. That ended yes, in, sure. yes, okay, but, yeah, but, right. but how did you experience uh, oh, okay, sorry. Yeah, no. The thing is, we've did we did already uh, six weeks of more touring this spring. So for me, uh, that just came back. You know, that's, <laughs> okay. that's what I thought you meant. Uh, but no, yeah, that was uh, that was fa fantastic on almost every level. Uh, I mean, obviously, Halloween is uh, a band that we listened to when we were younger, a band that uh, that has influenced Hammerfall a great deal. 
I think Joachim used to say on the shows, like uh, at, towards the end of our shows, that without hammer, without Halloween, Halloween, there would be no Hammerfall. Right? Kind of right with that. So oh. for us, it was it was a big. Um, well, I mean, there's a lot of other bands that had a big influence oh, us absolutely, too, absolutely. but but they were very important, very important for us. So um, I, it was a great experience for us. I mean, obviously in Europe, uh, we played for for a bigger. Uh, in, in stadiums, kind of that we we don't do normally with us. I mean, uh, some places were uh, closer than others, but for the most part, it was a lot bigger. And of course, in the U.S. and uh, Latin America, it was a lot bigger. I mean, we they they had fourteen thousand people in Chile, for example, uh, which is fantastic. You know, Absolutely. so it was very cool for us to experience. And what what we thought when we agreed to do this, as any support band, I think thinks, or special guests thinks like this. Is would you? Um, is there a chance that these people who come to the show will uh, enjoy your music as well? Because obviously most people came for Halloween, but since we are a band that has been around for close to thirty years now, people knew about Hammerfall too. And Hall ha Halloween and Hammerfall are not exactly the same, but also sort of moving in the same musical circles somehow. So if you're a fan of Halloween, uh, there's a big chance you you could like Hammerfall too if you open your mind to it. Uh, and that's what, what was our reasoning then uh, before we went on the tour. And it turned out it was 100% correct because uh, you know, it wasn't always, uh, uh, I mean, we always had Hammerful fans there, of course, but we, there wasn't uh, um, a, a majority of Hammerful fans usually. But when we ended the show, it looked like it. It looked like there was a majority of Hammerful fans in the show, in the arena because everybody was going like this. <laughs> so it, for us, it was a brilliant tour on on almost every level. Fantastic. So, and then in October, you will play a European tour um, with two shows in France, in Nantes, in Paris. What can we expect from the new shows? Uh, I don't know yet, <laughs> honestly. <laughs> uh, I mean, we're going to bring our our um, energy and all that stuff that we normally do. It's going to be a kick-ass heavy metal show. That's It doesn't matter if it's 100, 1,000, 10,000 <laughs> or 100,000 people in the audience. Uh, they're going to get the same show anyway, which is balls out, balls to the wall, just, you know, 100, 100 kilometers per hour from start to finish. But in terms of um, the rest, as far as uh, what the stage is going to look like or, or anything like that, I have no idea because we haven't really gotten around to doing that yet. Um, and for but the I, new songs, do... uh, how, many, how many new songs you will play? Oh. Uh, you haven't without chosen no... yet? No, without knowing either, I would guess three. We, we play 60, maybe 65 minutes, I think. So there's a whole bunch of albums that's going to be going into that. Absolutely. Uh, but I, I guess three songs is, is I mean, this is a, the tour for the album. So we probably play at least three songs. But but I don't know yet either because we haven't started you know, doing that. We So what I said earlier, we just came back from a tour. Now it's been um, today, two weeks ago today, we came back from a six week long tour of Latin America and the U.S., so I'm only now starting to get over the jet lag properly. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, it's um, that's what I thought you meant when he said you just came off a tour because for me this is very close okay, in, yeah, uh, in time, right? Absolutely. But so so we are, we're busy, busy festivals and stuff. We we played two festivals this weekend as well. Uh, exactly. Trondheim Rocks and Sweden Rock Festival, which is uh, for us very special always because that's that's we uh, we play there eight times and this is our Hellfest uh, basically. So it's been growing. Uh, we played there even before they were a Sweden Rock Festival when they were just a small Carl Sam Rocks Festival, it was called. In a, uh, we played in the tent outside of the little bigger stage. Now it's grown and grown and grown into a, an institution in Sweden. Uh, so Sweden Rock Festival is um, uh, very special on many, uh, for many reasons for us. But uh, most of all, it's because we play in our hometown, or sorry, in our home country for... Uh, I'd say 35,000 people or something like mm -hmm. that. There's a lot of people there anyway. Uh, and so, yeah, so that's that's what I'm, that's a high I'm riding on right now. Is, is that because I came back yesterday. Fantastic. So thank you very much, um, uh, Oscar, for all these informations about the new album, yeah. Avenge the Fallen. We remind to all our listeners that it will be released the 9th of August uh, with Nuclear Blast. Yes. So that's thank true. you very much. And we hope you the thank best you. for this new album. Thank you very much. Thanks for the interview.